Welcome to the writer's room. This is the second video. Finish your damn script. How are you? Um, these, this three video series is in preparation for the free class. And uh, I feel like the three of them, sort of the video, these three videos are like a whole class, right? That's about three hours of teaching and they're all interconnected. So watch this, but then sign up at April Yvette Thompson's writer's room dot weebly dot com or find me on Facebook. All right, let's do this. So the last video we talked about finding time and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine just for a moment that you had four days near the ocean in absolute quiet where people were bringing you meals and all you had to do was write. What would that be like? Allow yourself to imagine that, that kind of solitude, that kind of open space, that feeling of, I don't have to do anything and I don't have to be anywhere. I'm gonna give you permission to go to that place. And we're gonna practice going to that place as writers, right? Because until you can really physically go to that place, we're gonna find some ways to create that space. And the first one is for me to tell you that I'm giving you permission to write crap. Write shitty. Write things that are never gonna see the light of day. Just write them. To write without judgment. And the best way to do that, people always ask me, I get writer's block, I don't have enough time. Write without judgment and don't go back and edit. That's the answer. Just keep writing. Just keep writing. Just keep writing. I want you to practice staying on the page because staying on the page is that beach house with people serving you food. That is the quiet place. That is the still place. And you can find it anywhere. You just have to acclimatize yourself to hanging out in the quiet space of the page. And when I say hanging out on the page, I mean staying on the page and writing, even when nothing comes up. If you feel like nothing is coming up, then write about that. Write about that. Give yourself permission to bitch and moan. Because when you empty out, there's a story now that has the space to enter in, but you need to empty out. That's what being stuck is about, right? It's putting too many expectations on the writing. It's beating up on yourself. It's judging the writing. That's what writer's block or I came to the page and nothing came up. That's what that's about. So I'm going to give you permission to do nothing except put pen to paper and let words pour out. Some words will be good words, some words will be bad words, some words, if it's me, all the words will be bad words. <laughs> You're right, lots of words the, that are, I don't know what's going on in this story right now, and I'm just scribbling on the page right now because I don't know what else to say. And stay with that muscle of, I don't know what to say, 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 even if you have to write, I don't know what to say for three pages. If you stay on the page, trust that something will come up, okay? And the other piece is not going back and reading what you wrote and editing yourself, not having judgment about the writing because you're gonna write 500 pages to get a good 100 pages. So you might as well enjoy the ride, right? These are the ways that we get in our way. And this video series, all of which is in preparation for my first and only probably writer's retreat of the spring, this coming April, is about giving yourself permission. Most of why we don't write is we don't feel like we have the permission to, right? Because we have this notion in our heads, oh, a writer is this person and they went to school and they wrote this and they wrote that and they wrote that and they got produced and they got published and da 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 da. Let's throw all that out of the window. You're a writer because you come to the page and you write every day, right? The word writer isn't a quantifiable term, okay? You're a writer because you write. You're not a writer if you talk about writing and that's all you do. <laughs> You're a 
writer when you write, good, bad, or indifferent. You're not an editor. That's the editor's job to go back and check. You're a writer. And the more you pour yourself onto that page, the more will come up. The other question that I keep getting is, I can't focus on one story. Don't worry about focusing on one story right now. Don't worry about focusing on this is a play. Don't worry about focusing on this is a screenplay. Don't worry about focusing on this is a novel. I want you to learn how to have faith that if you go to the page, and for me, the page is prayer. It's meditation. It's where I go. Because see, in your journals, or my journals, I hope you have a password lock on your laptop. Nobody ever is going to see that, ever, ever. That's a quiet place for you and your creator to hang out and lay out all your fears, your joys, your wishes that you wouldn't dare say out loud, okay? So you're a writer because you write. In the last video, we talked about how to steal 10 minutes and make those 10 minutes really effective. Well, now the piece that I'm throwing in today is let go of writing needs to be this thing and a writer needs to be this thing. I hear people saying all the time, well, I'm not really a writer, I haven't been published. I'm not really a writer, I haven't been produced. Did you write today? Do you have plays, short stories, novels, journals? Then you are a writer. Having a notion of what's supposed to be will stop you from creating a new you. It will stop you from learning. Some of that is the internet. We see all these people seemingly accomplishing so much because, you know, social media allows people to, you know, paint pictures of their lives. For goodness sakes, people are dating each other's avatars, for God's sakes. It allows people to create something that's fake, right? Because we're not seeing the whole picture. Let go of that. Let go of what's supposed to be because there isn't a what's supposed to be. I had this aha moment about two weeks ago. Um, where I realized I've created the life that I dreamed about as a kid. Right? I wanted to live in a loft. I wanted lots of quiet. I didn't want to work in an office. I always wanted to work for myself. I am an Afro-Caribbean Latina woman. We don't like working for people. And once I got okay with that and said, I can write. I didn't know, I didn't even know how yet. I can write. Then the universe started manifesting ways. It sent me a teacher. It sent me a writing partner. Right? It sent me a gypsy woman in Edinburgh to say to me, you're going to write with something, with a typewriter or a keypad, and you're going to write with someone who's far away. That person was Jessica Blank, who I was in Edinburgh, she was in New York, and we were co-writing a play. How amazing is that? That gypsy woman was a gift. She gave me permission. And at that time, I did not think I was a writer. So I'm gonna give that gift to you. If you write, you're a writer. How would that change your life? How would that change the way you talk about your story with people? How would that change where you dream about what your, how your story is going to land? If you give yourself permission to learn about being one way to get it done, then you allow all these other opportunities to happen. All you have to say is, I'm a writer and write 10 minutes every day. Right? Once that block is gone, so much will come up. I want you to live in that space. That's the space I try and create as a writing teacher, right? Write with no agenda, okay? We talked in the last class about outlines and we talked about the inciting incident, okay? So the inciting incident is the trigger for the entire story. It is an event, something has to happen, right? There's a huge race riot in Miami, a little girl is lost, she has to find her mom, right? And if there's confusion about what the inciting incident is, I want you to start watching television and I want you to start watching film and I want you to pick out the inciting incident for the entire story. Come on, what's the inciting incident for Rocky? He lost his last job and they're about to get kicked out. That's an inciting of their apartment. <laughs> That's the inciting incident, right? Law and Order is a great example of the inciting incident because the inciting incident, sometimes we see the crime at the top of the show, but a lot of times we don't. We see the end result and then the script works backwards, right? But the crime is the inciting incident. It's the reason that the whole episode is happening. And plot point one is the next thing that happens after the inciting incident. Let's talk about what plot points seem to look like. 
I got lots of questions about this. A plot point, you introduce the protagonist. Remember, whoever we meet in the first 15 pages, that's who we pay attention to. So if you throw in a lot of people that aren't important, it kind of derails the storytelling, right? That first plot point, what is your protagonist doing in response to the inciting incident, right? Your protagonist needs to do something, okay? My kid is lost in a riot. She gets out on the street and she starts looking for her kid. It puts her immediately into action. That's the exciting thing about the inciting incident is that instead of you starting a script with lots of exposition and explaining, which tons of people do, if your protagonist is responding to the inciting incident, they're immediately put into action. We learn everything we, want, we need to know about them from the way that they proceed to solve that problem. That tells us about how much education they have, what makes them scared, what makes them angry, how determined they are, you know, where is their voice, you know, what's their, you know, um, sociological makeup, all kinds of things we learn when a character has to solve something, like go and find your kid in a riot, right? What makes that plot point interesting is that the antagonist, there's always someone else who enters into the scene that wants something different from the protagonist, okay? That's how you know you have a plot point. Something has happened that sent the protagonist into action, and then there's somebody in the scene that's stopping the protagonist from solving the problem that's been created by the inciting incident, right? So you have to have opposing forces. In other words, you have to have conflict in order to have action. And it's really just that simple, right? So the assignment that I gave you last time was to 10 minutes each day, write your inciting incident, write plot point one. So let's get more specific. Plot point one will be inciting incident. What does the protagonist want? What does the antagonist want? Who wins? What happens? Right? We'll know who won by what happens. The protagonist needs to find her kid in the riot. The antagonist is this cop who's blocked off the area and is not letting people in. Those two are going to go at it. Right? That's what needs to happen by the end of the scene. This woman searching for her child is confronting this cop who won't let her go search for her child. Something's got to happen there. Something's got to break right? to keep the story moving. So. The protagonist has come up against this obstacle, which is the antagonist going, who wants something different from what the protagonist wants. That means that your central character, the protagonist, now has to take a turn and do something else, which means another action. Just that simple. Plot point one, who wins? Well, the cop wins, he won't let her in, right? Plot point two, she decides to do something else, right? Find a payphone, call a neighbor, right? That's all plot point two. Find a payphone, call a neighbor, get on the phone, the neighbor is there, but the neighbor is barricaded in their house by the police. Another problem, right? And the assignment that I gave you was 10 minutes each day to create a new plot point. Super important to go back and read what you wrote the day before. And this is short stuff. There are a couple of sentences. What does the protagonist want? What does the antagonist want? What happens, right? A, B, C, plot, plot, plot. Everything makes everything happen. That's where plot tumbling comes from. So let me go back over this we discussed today. One, giving yourself permission to write crappy, giving yourself permission to call yourself a writer, right? And using the 10 minutes where you map out a new plot point each day as a place where you go for quiet and relaxation, right? So you're gonna take a look at this video. You're gonna take a look at the video before. You're gonna to listen to the class recording that we'll be sending you, and you're gonna stay tuned for the next video that's coming out in two days, right? And I would love to hear your questions. What kind of questions that you have? Because if you send me questions in response to this video, you can put it in the comments. You could email me at aprilyvettthompsoncoaching at gmail.com. If you send me questions, then I will use the video to respond to you. Make sense? Super exciting. All right. Stay tuned. There will be some pretty sexy announcements in the last class about opportunities to get private coaching and script doctoring, a new writer's retreat that's coming up in April. And you want to be on the edge of that, right? And get the freebies and the discounts. So watch the videos. Sign up. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.